Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Fox Hunter here and one of the most requested videos I've had in recent months was a updated lodge tour. Now my very first video on my channel was a lodge tour just introducing who I am as a hunter and why I wanted to lift my voice in support of a game that I love so much and that was born from uh, the Reventuli Coast update back in July of last year. I got so excited that I thought, well, you know, I play this game enough and I have enough experience. Maybe uh, starting a YouTube channel would be a really cool hobby. And I've enjoyed it very, very much so far. But I certainly have added some new things to my lodges since then. So I think it's about time we do an update. Now we are in my flagship lodge of Spring Creek Manor 1. And I have four lodges, so we'll go through them each one at a time. But you'll notice here in the grand staircase, we have a couple of bears, we have some birds up there on the stairwell, and so on and so on. So we're going to start here on the ground floor and work our way up. But before we do that, if you look to either side of the entrance way, you'll see a couple of piebald whitetail. I love the piebald fur variation. It's one of my favorites. So just a couple that I picked up along my journeys. And then also as you enter, we have these beautiful diamond white-tailed jackrabbits, some of my favorite trophies as well. And then I'm just going to cut to the right. We have one of the diamond bears I picked up on my Great One Bear grind. Unfortunately, still no Great One Bear yet. There were a couple of resets between its launch and the New England update, and I just didn't restart my grind after those things happened. So it's just one of those things that I need to get back to, but uh, a couple of the diamonds I picked up along the way. Now this Diamond Sika deer, she, or he rather, came out flying out of nowhere and he is featured in the short film titled Short and Sweet Diamond Sika. And you can watch that hunt on my channel if you'd like. It's very, like, I, like it says, short and sweet, but uh, it, it was really interesting. I was not expecting that, but I'm very, very grateful to have it. And then in this room here, just a couple of like random mallards and things that I've picked up, uh, blonde, Piebalds. Now, piebalds are a dime a dozen. They used to excite me and I used to keep them a lot, but now I don't so much because, again, they're just so common now. But we do have a diamond cinnamon teal that I picked up on Park Fernando. And we have a couple of ring neck pheasants of the white brown variety. And then over here, molting. Now, I saved the molting one because initially I wasn't sure if that was a rare fur type, but it turns out it is certainly not. But he's still really pretty because I like the lighter color pheasants. And then just, of course, a couple of placeholder rabbits. I really do like the antelope jackrabbit. I, I want a diamond in that species. There are several species in the game I still don't have a diamond of, and this is one of those I'd love to get one because this is one of my favorite species of rabbit. And then over here, just another pheasant and a Canada goose that was a brown hybrid. I used to think they too were special, but just like the piebald mallards, they are a dime a dozen, and it just angers me now to find them on the map. <laughs> So just, just a placeholder for now. And you'll see this a lot throughout my lodges. I have a ton of diamond whitetail and I don't, I'm not going to tell you every single story, but it's, it's just been part of the collection of doing a loose whitetail great one grind across a few maps. Um, but they are peppered throughout my entire lodge. And then these two are really, really sweet. So she is one of my more recent acquisitions, an albino Iberian wolf. Interesting story about her is her hunt started with crossing paths with a male winter fur type Iberian wolf. And as I was hunting him, I was trying to find his drink need zone. And as I was jumping lake to lake, she happened to be in the pack. And I thought it was him at a distance. And when I took her on the trot, I walked up and noticed the pink nose and realized I had something even more special. So I was able to claim her in that way. I did eventually catch up to the winter white male but unfortunately it was one of those situations where I never found his drink need zone and I caught up to him in a resting zone and I tried multiple times to hunt him and finally got so frustrated that I shot him in the old way and did not get full score so I did not save that trophy and I know that that's an uncommon fur type so it's more likely that I'll cross paths with him again but I, it, you could do a size comparison between her and my Mela um, gray wolf Look at the size comparison. She is tiny compared to him. That is amazing. But here is a melanistic gray wolf, and he was an early acquisition back in 2001. Now, the sad story about him is he was in the same pack with an eggshell white female. Unfortunately, I had no idea what I was looking at when I saw her and took her out as well. I did not know she was a rare fur type, so I did not save her, and I feel really, really bad about that. But at least I have this gold mela for it. <laughs> so... 
Moving on to the next room, this is my room of diamond turkeys, just a few that I've collected on Silver Ridge Peaks over the years. And um, this is my diamond Western Capper Kelly. Now he was supposed to be my very first community diamond. I was on a live stream and a cross paths with a Capper Kelly that had a score that made it a potential diamond. And I did not know that because I hadn't really hunted these animals. And it was the community that pointed it out and we hunt that Western Capper Kelly only to be trolled. And then I promised that I would find another diamond potential Capper Kelly and we'd all hunt it together. But unfortunately, I thought this one would troll us too. Took it and it was of course a diamond. So that's why he sits there and not in the grand hallway, which you'll find out why in just a minute. My first diamond Iberian wolf also featured in a short and sweet video on my channel. Uh, real, real quick hunt and uh, was very pleased to get him as quickly as I did. So please go check out that video. And this one is also featured in a video on my channel, the Diamond Collared Peccary. Very, very cute, very, very satisfying hunt to learn kind of how these animals move across the map as they're traveling through. So highly recommend you go check out that video as well. And then just a random news of the rack style that I absolutely hate. I hate this rack style. I think he was just a placeholder for now, but um, otherwise I'm not even quite sure why I saved him because I really hate that rack style. Um, they're very annoying to me because they're like one of the most common spawners on my Medved map. And my moose grind, well, that's a whole other shtick for a whole other video. But on this side, we have two more of my favorites. Uh, we have two mellow moose. Now this one, uh, my very first one, this was an interesting story. I found him on Medved uh, back on uh, May 5th of 2022. And he was in a spot where there was just a ton of moose. I don't know if it was several herds converging together or if it was a glitch and they were just spawning over and over again. But every single time I could, took out a male moose, another one would appear from behind the shrubs and take off running. And so I was just firing away and taking them out one by one. And he came along and I didn't even realize he was a Mela until I picked him up because he was backlit by the sun. But that's how we ended up getting him and he was my very first Mela Moose. This one is a more recent acquisition which was part of my Great One Moose Grind. And I was on a multiplayer server map when I found him. Uh, whenever I jump on multiplayers, I usually go to the coast and run the coast because in most cases, those need zones haven't been opened up. And that's where I found him. And you can watch his hunt in the video titled A Diamond Montage, A Surprise Rare, and A Community Apology, where I also talk about the Western Capricali story and how uh, I messed that up. And right between them, I have this beautiful albino turkey that I got on New England. When I first spied him, I thought he was a leucistic, but it turns out that he was an albino. And uh, I was very, very happy to see that because I didn't have an albino of the species. But you can watch that hunt also. It is in my playlist. It's a it's a really kind of easy going kind of hunt. Now we do have a couple of placeholders. This Mexican bobcat is one of those. It's one of the highest ones I've gotten, but if I get a diamond, he'll go in here. And then we have, of course, a bunch of different fur typed, mostly piebalds. Like I said, I was collecting them for a while, but until I realized how common they were. And we also have a piebald harlequin duck. Um, I don't know how common they are because they don't hunt these very often. So, but he's still really pretty and I popped him in there with that formation. And in here we just have a big old moose just standing guard over the room, really. And a Roosevelt elk to assist him in that process. And here we have a gold eastern cottontail, just kind of keeping it a placeholder for now. And again, a couple of more piebald ducks and another Roosevelt elk. Um, I do like the Roosevelts for their rack styles. I do have two diamonds in one of my other lodges. And here's one of the first diamond turkeys I ever got on Silver Ridge Peaks. Nothing super special about that. We just found a crowd of them, started shooting, and there he was. Another white tail. This one's gold, though, um, occupying a place that will eventually be added to with the diamond. And then these are also golds all down this hallway. Placeholders on these, if you will. And in here, we actually have a diamond white tail as well. One of my uh, big ones. This was my first giant sizable white tail. And I found him on Layton Lakes and I was across the lake and, and spied him on the other side. And his rack was so big in the graphic that I I didn't know what I was looking at. I thought it was a glitch at first because it's certainly not a great one rack style of any stretch, but it was huge and it was very nerve wracking to shoot him from across the lake and then have to run up and see what it was. 
but that's the largest whitetail I had for a very long time until I got my uh, bigger one that's up there on the railing. And then we complete our downstairs tour with another diamond black bear that I got again just on the Great One Bear grind. Nothing super special about him either. Now on to the grand staircase. This is the position for what will be my community diamonds as I earn them. The next one we're working on is a Diamond Canada Goose. This was the Western Capper Kelly that my community trained me on, on how to recognize diamonds. So this is why he occupies the spot at this time. And then we have just a couple of gold ducks uh, leading up to the pinnacle, which happens to be a duck lovingly referred to as Diamond Dave. Now, Diamond Dave, I picked him up on Leighton Lakes, and he was a max 21 scoring duck. And I kept seeing him particularly on Brunacci Lake. And every time I saw him, I, I really would wanted to get him. I really, really struggled with that, though, because if you've watched any of my previous videos, hitting birds is like the bane of my existence. And he kept flying off and getting spooked and stuff. But eventually I caught up with him at the lake um, north of Runachi. Now, if you go to Runachi Lake and you run over the ridge that separates it from a lake just north of there, there's a hidden lake. So I was just running back and forth there and found him at that northernmost lake and got him. And I was very, very pleased with that. It took a very long time. And this is my largest whitetail to date. This is my 272 I found on a multi surfer player on Rancho Del Arroyo. And he used to sit at the grand staircase where my community diamond slot is now. But um, the idea is that he will eventually be replaced with my great one. And just a couple of moose I picked up over the years hunting hither, thither, and yon. Nothing super special about these or this Ibex. I only saved this particular Ibex because I think it was one of the first ones I ever killed. And their faces challenge me. <laughs> Anyway, so we're going to come back across here. We have just another big old moose. Nothing special about him or this blonde mule deer. Now, this is a smaller uh, black tail. And the only reason why I have his antlers is because they make a heart shape. And that's why they're positioned the way they are. Um, he, he was a gold, but um, that's the only reason why I have that. It's because of that heart shape. And in here, a couple of more placeholders, gold white-tailed jackrabbit. We have a small bronze sicka deer. I think he's one of the smallest ones I've ever seen, but uh, we're still looking for a twiggy of that species. And a gold one. This was the biggest one until I got my diamond, so that's why he's here too and will eventually be replaced. We also have this gold wildebeest, both gold in color and gold in trophy score. And that's one of my favorite fur variations for this animal, so you'll find several of those throughout my lodge. And of course, another diamond white tail. But in this room, my most favorite trophy is hanging over the bed. It is this beautiful melanistic female mallard. I heavily featured this particular trophy in my very first video because I wanted to do a comparison to the lighting system as it was before the Reventuli Coast update and afterward. And that was a big selling point for that particular update because they were going to fix the lighting system so that things didn't like blindingly glitter in your eyes. And she was one of them because she's flanked by these two lamps. When I hung her up here, she used to glitter gold, and now she no longer does that with the lighting fix that they provided during the Reverend Tully Coast update, which was a little sad because that gold glittering made her look very, very pretty. But I am kind of grateful that I can now see details in her fur. For example, you can see those shades of green uh, along her body and in her wings. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? She is one of my all-time favorite trophies for this reason. I mean, she's just magnificent. Look at all the colors you can see in there. Right, and we are moving on and ah, my albino Rocky Mountain Elk. Now there's a funny story about this one too. So I watch other YouTubers to gain inspiration and also to learn some tricks of the trade and Kill Clinton is one of them. And one day over breakfast, I was watching a video just to pass the time from him and he had gotten an albino Rocky Mountain Elk in his video. So later that day, I thought, huh, I wonder if I jump on if maybe I could either see one or spawn one in. And lo and behold, this was an initial spawn after the Reventuli Coast update and some of the fixes that they did to the Roosevelt Elk drink time and that sort of thing. So I was very, very pleased to see him. And I think he's within the same score range almost as the one that Kill Clinton got. So that was pretty interesting. But that's how he came about. And now over here, we just have this diamond uh, feral pig I got on T.O. Wara. I did have footage of this, but unfortunately, something happened when I went and actually laid the shot into the, this animal and I didn't have enough to make a video out of, but 
wasn't anything super special other than the fact that it's my very first diamond feral pig. And then over here is probably one of the most coveted rare fur types in the game, a Mela Coyote. At least he's shown up in several top 10 lists of the rarest fur variations in animals you can get. So I like to think so, but he should have been a silver. And he was again, one of those hunts where I just could not get him to turn right. He wouldn't stop in his drink zone. There was no like real opportunity. So I ended up shooting him and hitting him in the backside, unfortunately, and he did not get full score. But he's one of my favorites as well. Now this room is supposed to be my room of the weirdos. So like mismatched antlers and racks and that sort of thing. And we kind of have that going on. I will focus on my Roosevelt elk right over there. You can kind of see how that one on that side turns in and then on the left, it kind of flares outward. So this is what this room was dedicated to. And it's kind of fallen apart because I've moved some things around. Um, but we also have this moose. That was the smallest moose I had ever seen in my life when I took him and hung him in here. So obviously I have smaller moose now, but I just thought he looked ridiculous. Same with that white tail over there. That is just such a small rack. That's why he's in here. But my favorite piece in this room is this deer right here. I have not seen a deer like him before or after having harvested him. And what strikes me is how low and wide his antlers are. They're basically touching his ears. And I have never seen another deer like this before. Um, and I really do hope I encounter another one, but until then I still have this guy and he's awesome. And I found him on Leighton Lakes and I just couldn't believe his rack. It was just so low and wide. So there he is all bewildered, like, how did I get here? Anyway. Down at the opposite end of the room, we have a brown hybrid duck. Nothing serious. I just, brown hybrids are kind of pretty to me. And that's why he's here. We have a piebald coyote that was taken in as much the same way as my Mela. He did not make full score. So, but he's really, really pretty and I really like him. And then just a plain old orange one. Uh, I think orange was just a unique color I encountered and was curious about it. Same with these foxes. They're just placeholders as well. A bronze and a bronze. And then we also have a row of diamonds back here. Now, here's the interesting thing about this particular hunt. This took forever on Verhonga Savannah because this particular animal was very, very skittish. It didn't matter if I had scent cover, the wind was blowing away from me on him or whatever. I could not get close to him. So it took me hours to track this boy and finally get into a position where I could shoot him. And this was well before I started my YouTube channel. So I don't have video of this. This time it just happened to be in a herd on a mountainside somewhere in Silver Ridge Peaks. So nothing super fancy about him. It was one of those surprise, oh my goodness, level five, diamond potential, let's go kind of moments. And he, while he is not a diamond, this was the very first gold blue wildebeest that I ever harvested. So I really like him. I love that fur variation. It's one of my favorites. So coming into this room, it looks pretty sparse, but if you turn around, you'll see that I have two albino white-tailed jackrabbits that I got on Leighton Lakes uh, about six months apart. So uh, this one was on January 13th of 2022, and this one is, was in June of 2022. And uh, I really, really like them. They, they add a really nice pairing here in my lodge. Um, nothing super fancy about their hunt either. I think he was the hardest one to get because he was on the trot, but even still, they were moving fairly slowly. Um, so yeah, they're my bookend albinos. And then we have a blonde mallard. And the only reason why I have her in my lodge is look at that score, 9.19 .9 repeating. Even if I see weird numbers, I will keep them because it's just, it's, I don't know. For me, it's something silly that I, I enjoy. And a gold white tail that's just holding a position here. But we also have my one and only diamond black tail. Now, here's an interesting story about him. When I encountered him, he was north of Runachi, uh, past the Hidden Lake. And usually when I was running through there for my white tail grind, I would see them feeding. And he had his head down in the shrubs. And I saw another big boy next to him and was actually tracking him. When all of a sudden he lifted his head up and I about died because of how big his rack was. So it was a very scary shot because I took it dead on and hit him in the lung. I was trying for a heart shot, but I was really lucky to get a vital regardless. And um, yeah, so this makes me want to hunt blacktail more because I just have the one of that species. And back here, we just have a diamond whitetail. So that fills out this room here. 
And that basically concludes our lodge tour. Um, at least a Spring Creek Manor one, because we've got three other lodges to bounce over to. So without further ado, let's go check out our other lodges, which is the Sika Safari one, Spring Creek Manor three. Now I did have a Red Deer Lodge that was a Spring Creek Manor two, but I deleted it when I moved all of my Red Deer to a Sika Safari Lodge. So we'll go check that out here in a minute. It may even be this lodge we're jumping to. So no, I can already tell you this is not our Red Deer Lodge, but we will get there eventually. But as we enter into my Sasika Safari 1, you get to see my Diamond Roosevelt Elks all taken on Leighton Lake. And there was a third that I tried for, but I botched that shot. So unfortunately, I only have the two, which I think are magnificent. I love these animals. And I also have these dueling piebald whitetails. Now, here's the interesting thing about that is they have the exact same fur type. It's basically they're fighting themselves. And it, how I know this is if you look at the stripe down that leg, this animal has it on his leg too. So there's no variation in the piebald fur distribution. I wish they would change that and add like different styles of piebald that you can get. And maybe they do and I just haven't encountered all of them. But, but yeah, these two are locked forever in contentious battle. Now over here, we have some more recent trophies. This is my most recent one with this piebald roe deer I got on a live stream while I was trying to find a diamond roe deer. And what I love about her is it looks like they took the Siberian musk deer and just blew it up and made it a bigger animal, but she is awfully pretty. I love her spot patterning. And this is just a placeholder for a future diamond bighorn sheep. I do love his antlers though. It looks like he's crushing his cheeks in. Um, and then I do have some diamond pronghorn now. Of the two, that one wasn't the most exciting hunt. Again, just saw him at night in a herd drinking and took him out. But this one, oh my gosh. So on Silver Ridge Peaks, on the bottom right-hand corner of the map, there's a body of water. And the edge of the reserve cuts through there. But there are need zones that spawn outside of the reserve on that corner. Now, luckily, he was on reserve when I encountered him. He was just walking through the area. But I spooked him, and uh, he started running for the border. And so I shot him. And after I shot him, he went across the edge of the reserve. And I was like, no, <laughs> no, I can't lose this one, particularly because he's got that extra long horn on that one side. So I jumped on an ATV and I crossed the border. And within that 10 second respawn period, I was able to pick him up. But right as the harvest screen appeared, I blinked out to be respawned at an outpost. And I cried out. I was like, no, what does that mean? Luckily, the harvest screen was still available and I was able to get him. I did have footage of that and I'm not sure why I didn't post it, but it did eventually get deleted as I cleared my video cache. So I wish I still had that. Of course, more diamond whitetail. Gosh, they're everywhere. Nothing special about them. Now here's some special things. These are the battle of the paddles. But before you get there, just a couple of turkeys on either side. I used to love this light brown variation, but again, it's become a dime a dozen. So it's not as special anymore. But we have the Battle of the Paddles aptly named by Ian, who could, jumps on my live streams fairly frequently. And they're some of the largest moose I have at 229.4 and 8, respectively. But I wanted to have them locked in combat. And I wish there was a huge multi-mount where you can like do a combat version between these mooses. That would be great. I would certainly use that for this purpose. And this is my community multi-mount. We have all of the Ibex in the Grand Slam from Quattro Carolinas. And we took care of this on many of our live streams. So I recommend go watching them if you want to get the full scoop on these hunts. As well as my Double Diamond Redemption Day, where I did accidentally botch a shot on a diamond and managed to recover by finding two diamonds later. So go check out that video. Now, looking down the halls that flank us, these are just the diamond moose that I have picked up from my Great One Moose Grind. There might be a few golds up there too, but just filling the lodge, and I'm beginning to think that I'm going to need to open a moose lodge exclusively soon because I'm just getting so many big racks, but no great ones yet. But I'll walk down each hallway and you can kind of see their sizes and that sort of thing. And while we're going down this way, um, I'll go ahead and pop in here. We just have a placeholder wipe our... We just have a placeholder white-tailed deer up here, piebald. But here is one of my all-time favorites. This is my Moonlight hat. And I'm curious as to why EW chose to do gray pumas because and mountain lions, actually. Because 
I don't think this color variation actually exists in the wild. I have done some research and the only evidence of a non-traditional color cat, and I'm talking browns, reds, that sort of thing. The only record we have of that nature in real life is a trail cam shot of an albino puma in South America. I have never seen pumas or mountain lions of this gray variety. And if you know that they exist in real life, please shoot them my way. Shoot like shoot me a link to find the picture because I would love to see that. But this moonlight cat, I took him in the dead of night on a really isolated lake with a lot of rocks that were his same color. So he blended it really, really well. But I did end up getting him and he is featured in a video on my channel titled The Moonlight Cat. So go check it out. One of my favorites. Now in this room, we have a real treat. This is my largest moose to date. This is my 300.4. Uh, I do have a short of me shooting this animal. So if you wanna see that hunt, it's nothing special. I just walked up on him and did a heart shot, uh, but he's still magnificent and I love having him here. And this is my reverse troll mountain lion. You can see his hunt in the video titled The Last Laugh after I declared war on the mountain lions because they were always trolling me. And I assumed that this guy was another troll, but it turns out he was a diamond uh, when I took him out without any grace or real paying attention to detail. So yeah, go watch that video. Well, in fact, watch the entire war on mountain lions. It's only like three videos deep um, because he trolled me. And uh, yeah, go check that out. And then we have just another diamond turkey and so on and so forth. So there's a couple of other rooms in here that have some interesting stories. So let's run back and take a look. Those up on the wall right there, the wolf, the pig, and the springbok are just placeholders. Um, but funny thing about this is when I saw her, I thought she was a melanistic. I didn't realize they come in this color of black brown. So that's why, that's why she's up on the wall. So down this hallway, we have a couple of really awesome trophies. This particular trophy is featured in a video called Dances with Bulls, and he was a mythical that just came charging out from behind the shrubs when I was setting up on a level seven, very hard uh, water buffalo, but I was so glad to see him and I immediately switched my target and took him out. So go watch that video. It's actually kind of silly, but it's one of my favorite hunts. Now this guy, this, this happened well before I started my YouTube channel and when I first saw him, he was a level nine legendary and I about fell over in my chair because he was huge and massive. And just like every other big animals that I, I have tried to take down, he was very skittish. I would try to get close and he would just take off running. And the wind would always shift not in my favor when I came up on him. I don't know if he's a wind bender or an air bender or whatever. But as he took off running one day, I ran after him and he kind of did this thing where he was like running a short distance then doubling back. So when he did a double back through a shrub, I just took the shot. I was like within, I was about this far away from him and just took the shot. And for a moment, I thought I had really, really messed it up, but no, I sank it straight into a lung and got him. And that was probably one of the wildest hunts I've been on. And I wish to goodness I had filmed it because it sounds unbelievable even to me, but that's exactly what happened. All right, I did want to point out one other small boy. So this little sassy tar uh, ptarmigan, um, he was part of the video, if you go watch it, my Cinderella redemption story. And I was t hunting my very first diamond moose and he just happened to come up out of nowhere and walk straight toward me, kind of in the pose like that and just be sassy and screamed at me. He never took off, he never flew away. He never even ran away from me, but he was just standing there being sassy. So that's why he's in our lodge. And then we have a couple of burbs, just a Western cap for Cali and um, a uh, gray hazel grouse, and finally a Western Capricali of the bright variety. This is my favorite fur variation for the Western Capricali, so that's why she's here. Now this is my specialties room. I think I've spent more time in here in all of my videos and live streams than anywhere else, but this is where I have a lot of my rare fur variations, including these pie bolts that were taken in short order of each other on Medved. There's video about that on my channel, and I encourage you again to go back and take a look at it. But um, these ones were very interesting. This one is from a video titled, What Was That? Because she came flying out of the shrubs, and it was only because I saw the white and the brown mix that I knew it could have been something special. And that's how I got her. 
This one was from my moose grind and she was also part of my moose grind. She just trotted up out of nowhere. I think this one here is featured in a video titled how my grind's going or something like that, but you can watch her hunt on that video. And then up here we have some piebald blacktail. One of which is featured is a double feature in my video about my moonlight cat. He just came out of the shrubs out of nowhere on Layton Lake when I bounced over there to hunt something else. And I shot him at night. I wasn't sure what I was looking at, but that hunt is featured in my moonlight cat video. Now this, now I love this fella right here. Oh my gosh, he's my dancing goat. And he came about in the video, they won't be denied. Uh, it was about my herd management red deer grind for my great one. And he just came with a little group of goats through one of my need zones that I was using to call red deer to spawn my great one. And I had to shoot him twice. And on the second shot, we saved it barely by the skin of our teeth because we nicked his liver. But I won't spoil that hunt for you too much. Go watch it. It's pretty wild. And I am so happy that I have him. I love my dancing goat. Now this leucistic, I completely forgot I even had it. I, I must have hunted him very early back in 2021. And he just happened to be in a herd, I'm pretty sure. I don't even remember the details. But I certainly remember the details of the Birch Lady, which is this trophy's name. Um, and she's featured in a hunt called Lady Leucistics on my channel. So please go check that out. I don't want to spoil it for you because this was an incredibly awesome, if not frustrating hunt. She does not have any kind of scoring because I accidentally brained her with a compound bow. So go watch it. And then here, during my war on the mountain lions, this fella spawned in. And you can see the hunt of this one in a video called, Why is this cat so bright? Because I was hunting at night and he, through my night vision binoculars, was just vibrantly bright. And that's how I found out he was an albino. And then from here, we have my piebald European bison. One thing about this particular fur variation is that I'm a little disappointed in it because you can't really tell it's piebald. It's pretty uniform in color. If I can get around, I'll show you where the lighting's good. But I can't really tell that she's a piebald. She looks almost leucistic to me. And you can compare her to my actual leucistic bison over here. This She was also taken in the video called Lady Leucistics. And this was a ridiculous hunt. I actually just ran after her with a compound bow and just shot her on the run because I was so tired of my moose great one grind that I wanted to do something completely different. So that's how I got her. But if you compare them, they're not that far off from their fur color. It's, it's kind of frustrating. Now this male of female deer I found on a multiplayer server on Rancho Del Arroyo. Nothing special about her. She was just walking with a herd and I tracked her a little ways and, and took her out. So, but she is paired with one of my all-time favorite trophies, and that is this albino and Mela locked together in battle. And you can kind of see they're almost the same size, which makes it even more special. Now, the Mela was just standing in a herd in the Highland Swamps area of Layton Lake, so that was a fairly easy hunt. But my albino took several hours because, like several others, he spooked very easily. Wind would never be in the right position for him. And so I had to chase him down and track him down, and that's how I ended up getting him. Um, but I'm so grateful because it is one of my favorites because that uh, light and dark dichotomy are fighting each other for dominance. And that concludes the tour of this, except um, I know you keep noticing that room over there, but uh, that is the room that we should never go into. And if you want to know why, go watch the video titled, He's Watching You. And you'll see why we never, ever, ever go into this room here. Guarding that door, we have an I a southeastern Spanish ibex that you can see the hunt of this in one of my live channels um, or one of my live streams. But look at that score. It's 66.59 repeating. But when we picked him up in the field, he was 66.6. .6. So that's why he guards this room, which we will not be going into ever. Anyway. So that concludes the tour of this lodge. Let's go ahead and jump over to Spring Creek Manor 3. Now this one is not like a super important lodge to me, but it is my bear lodge. I guess I should move all my diamond bears into this, but I like them in my uh, flagship lodge of Spring Creek Manor 1. But when Rev and Tuli came out, I had the dubious honor of getting two spirit bears to spawn in on the same time on the same map. So this is my bigger of the two, the male, and 
when they had spawned in, I was actually kind of sad because I assumed that maybe spirit bears were becoming a more common fur type, and I was bracing myself to find even more of these out there. And fortunately, that was not the case. Um, these just happened to be two that were initial spawns, and when I took them off their, my map, I haven't seen any since. So that's that's good. I think these should stay special because of their color variation. And then over here, these these two saps. Oh my gosh, these guys. Ugh, you guys. So here's the thing about these two, and I have to make a confession here. Now, I've confessed this several times in previous videos and on live streams, so uh, bear with me as it were. No pun intended. But when Revan Tuli launched and there was the Great One Black Bear added, there was a glitch that you could exploit to get a Great One Black Bear fairly easily, and that was the Mr. Black glitch. And I actually hadn't played through the mission system on Leighton Lake yet, so it put me in the unique position as a level 60 to be able to go back and try that glitch. And it did indeed work. I was able to get a great one to spawn, and I actually did kill it and claim the trophy. But as soon as I did that, I felt really sick to my stomach, and I did not want my great one to have been achieved that way. So I went ahead and deleted all evidence, with the exception of a few screenshots that you have to take during the mission. But I wondered if you could recreate the glitch just using a regular need zone on a different map. So I went to SRP and I was testing this theory and you can see video of it. It's there's a video titled Mr. Black Glitch didn't work, but it got me two diamonds and these are the diamonds um, because these two diamonds are of different trophy classes. One is a 22.8 and the other one is a 23.1. And when I log out, log in to recreate the Mr. Black glitch, these two would bounce back and forth in that need zone sometimes. And I was keeping a list of each time I encounter them. And it always made me think that I was so close to recreating the glitch in almost a legitimate way until I realized I was dealing with two diamonds on my map at once. So I went ahead and harvested them both. You can go watch those if you want to see how that went down. So, but that's the story behind those two. And again, this one's fairly sparse. It's intended for most of my bears, but I did move my dilute mule deers into here. And she was a fairly recent acquisition, um, which I was very, very pleased to see because I hadn't seen one in a very long time. And of course, he's a very old trophy dating from 2021. So there are my dilute mule deers. And then we have some more diamonds from my great one black bear hunt. But I also wanted to start showing off various fur colors. So here is a gray brown bear. It's one of my favorite fur variations. I love that color of slate gray. It's absolutely beautiful. And I have paired him up with a cinnamon fur type over here just to show off the fur. I do love them for their fur styles. And we have a little diamond just sitting back over in here watching over our books. Hi friend. And I think that's pretty much it for the downstairs space. I do have one more trophy upstairs that I most recently got for my bears. And this one is the gold color variation. Um, this was found on Medved fairly recently. And I really, really do love that gold fur type. It's very pretty. And then we just have an access to your placeholder and nice gold and another Canada goose of the gray variety. Again, I love shades of gray. They're very beautiful, so that's why I have her here. I think that's about it. I'm just gonna run around real quick. Now, that's it. So that completes the tour of this lodge. I know it was very short, but again, it was just kind of a placeholder when I started getting more and more animals and was running out of room in my other lodge. All right, so welcome to my final lodge. This is my red deer lodge. And as I slap myself with the door, again, um, but flanking the entrance are my two Mellis tags. I am really proud of these. These were the result of utilizing herd management on Teowara to both spawn in some really interesting fur types, but also to try and get my great one. And I absolutely love them. They are featured in videos on my channel. Highly recommend you go check them out. But one of these boys was actually the lead off in my video titled, They Will Not Be Denied, which was primarily about the feral goats. So. Uh, definitely go check it out. Beautiful hunts, very easy hunts. I didn't do anything super special with the first one I got, but I tried to take the other one with a bow, I think, and failed miserably. So, um, yeah. I think he was supposed to be silver, and that's why I shot him incorrectly, but you'll, you can go watch that hunt. 
Now, this was my very, very first Red Deer Diamond um, back on March 19th of 2022. And this is what started Red Deer Fever for me. And I really, really, really wanted to collect Red Deer because I love their antler styles. They're one of my favorite animals of the big variety in the game. And by using herd management, I, I'm pretty sure that's the only reason why I got this animal as quickly as I did my great one. Red Deer. Now, prior to getting him, however, and prior to starting herd management, I had been hunting Red Deer all willy-nilly across all the maps that hosted them. That's Park Fernando, that's Hirschfelden, and of course, Tio Wara. And that may have contributed to getting him because I probably had thousands of kills before I saw this one, but it wasn't until herd management that I started getting the big boys, which flank him on either side. So we have just diamond after diamond after diamond, and the big racks are my favorite ones. I have lots of those. I also have plenty of piebalds of this. I'm really good at finding piebalds for some reason. And a lot of my piebald red deer either came from my map, Tiro Wara, or multiplayer maps on Park Fernando. So that's why I have them. Now this guy, oh my goodness. This is an interesting story and another one that you can go watch on my channel in the video titled The Long Game. But biggest albino I have ever seen in game so far. And I wanted to take him not with the traditional rifle way. I wanted to take him with a long bow. And so it took a really, really long time. He would not come to my tree stand. He would spook very easily. But I spent hours, hours, I think a grand total of four hours trying to get this guy. And luckily, all you get to see is like 30 minutes of it, but it was a nightmare. But I finally ended up taking him, and I can tell you that feeling when I downed him with a bow in a proper way, I was I was exhausted but ecstatic. So, but here's the thing with this particular trophy. Um, at one point in the hunt, I accidentally shot him in the face with a with an arrow while I was kind of like looking at him. I did use an exploit. I logged out and logged back in to recorrect the shot. And I was told by the community when I posted the video that it was looked down upon to do that. So I posted a poll to the community that said, should I keep him or should I destroy him on camera because I used an exploit? And graciously the community said, keep him, but don't do it again. So I'm very pleased that I was able to keep that one. But diamonds, 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 diamonds everywhere. Oh my gosh. Down here, we have some other albino red deer that I have. This one having spawned during my herd management run on Tio Wara. I think he was between my two melons, and he is the smallest albino I've ever seen. But this guy was my very, very first albino, uh, just randomly in a herd by a drink zone. And um, he was a long time ago, back in March of 2022. And we're gonna cross down here. Now these are my small rack diamonds. They're not my favorite by a long stretch. I really dislike this rack style. And I think it's because I see it so often in game. But I did get some really cool things where I got a split rack with the big rack and one of these smaller racks. And I've got two of these. And there's one that's actively on my map in Tiawara that I haven't hunted yet. So that's kind of interesting. It's also a great way for me to demonstrate why I like the big rack versus that other like spidery kind of palm shaped rack. But and then just some different rack styles. I have so many different rack styles. I had the idea to do like a video showcasing the evolution of racks because it looks like when you get smaller animals that grow and graduate into bigger animals, that there are certain racks that look like they could grow into each other, if that makes sense. So I'm sure that's clear as mud, but I was going to do a comparison of it, but that was a project I never quite finished, so that's why I have so many red deer. And of course, more diamonds from my red deer grind. And we do have one wonky little red deer over here, and I love him because he is just so messed up. That one side is just so small, so that's why he sits over here. I got him on Park Fernando, and that was a long-distance shot that I was really proud of. All right, and I don't think... Oh, actually, this room is important because it is my piebald collection. It's awesome. Take a look at all of these big old piebalds and some tiny ones that I have found. Again, either on Hirschfelden or on multiplayer servers on Park Fernando. That's where I found most of these is server hopping. And let's see. I don't think I have anything in here yet. Ah, slap myself with the door. Nope, I don't have anything in there yet, so at least it's not the room that we should not speak of. 
But this is actually the most important room to me of all my lodges. This is where we have our channel mascot, Twiggy. Hi, Twiggy. Now, here's the thing about Twiggy. He originally started as a level three, which was the smallest boy I'd seen in my life up until that point, when a level two spawned in and his minimum score was a five. And that just threw me. So we did end up taking out Twiggy. There's a video of it on the channel called Twiggy's Fate. And he's featured in several videos prior to that. So that's how we ended up with a channel mascot named Twiggy. And that has kickstarted the idea to fill a lodge with the smallest boys possible. So this goose was featured in a video called Emergency Meeting, which was a play on Among Us, which is another game I really enjoy playing because we had a couple of imposters that tried to claim the smallest boy I'd ever seen in my life trophy and become a Twiggy in the Twiggy room. But this is actually the smallest goose I've ever seen in my life. And we have our Twiglet Piglet. He's featured in a recent video. I think that was my Diamond Redemption video, my Double Diamond Redemption. So go check that out. He was a very short, quick hunt, but a nice, clean heart shot. And then this is the smallest moose I have ever seen in my life. Oh my gosh, his bottom score, I think, was like also five. Um, but he was T90 Ninny. He is also featured in a video about my moose great one grind. So go check him out. And finally, another example of how YouTube influencers influenced me was that I think it was either Scarecrow or Flinter again did a video about finding level one black bears and how rare they were. So I jumped on Silver Ridge Peaks on a multiplayer server and happened to find this level one black bear. I mean, look at that trophy rating. It's a 12.8. He literally is the smallest boy I've ever seen in my life. So this is one of the most important rooms to me is just we have our channel mascot and we are going to fill this space and possibly a whole lodge with the smallest animals possible. And I think that concludes my lodge tour. Thank you all so much for joining me. I really appreciate you coming along. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the update. And uh, I'm still kind of plugging away at it. Um, I'm beginning to think that I need to rethink how I'm scheduling things because it's so hard to keep West with video production right now, doing two live streams a week and that sort of thing. So I may make an announcement about future programming and whether or not um, I might have to back off on live streaming until I could get my video cache up and running again. It's just slowed way down and I don't like that. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for coming along. If you enjoyed this review or you have watched several of my adventures and would like to join, please consider dropping a like and subscribing below. You can also ring that bell for when new content drops. And if you come along without subscribing, that's just fine. I'm happy to have you. And I will catch you on our next adventure. Bye!